In this video we're going to talk about inverse variation basics. Okay, the first thing that we need to talk about is the format of the equation that we would see. For example, it would be y equals k divided by x, where k is some number. k is a number. For example, we could have y equals 10 divided by x. So in this case, k equals 10. So k will be a constant. k will be a constant. In other words, k stays constant. It's called the constant of variation. It never changes. It will always be, in this case, 10. We could also have y equals 15 divided by x or 20 divided by x or 2 divided by x. All of these are possible forms. So realize that k will be some number. k is our constant. It will never change. Once it's set up, y equals 15 over x, the 15 stays the same. No matter what we evaluate for our independent variable x, which in turn de determines what our dependent var variable y will be, those may change as we build a table of values, but the k or constant will always be the same. Okay, so that is the format of the equation. I'm going to erase some of these things here. We'll leave that up as we continue on. The other basic is the way the graph looks. An inverse variation, draw an axis here, we'll draw a positive x and a positive y axis, x axis, y axis. A, an inverse variation situation, a y equals k divided by x situation will have a graph that looks similar to this. Okay. In some cases in class we've said this kind of looks like a hockey stick. It takes that rough shape of the graph. So uh, you will always notice that specific situation. Uh, when we look at a table of values, we will have a specific pattern that occurs there. So let's start this off x and y couple of critical attributes that we will see in the table. First of all, when x is 0, this is undefined, so we will see error, error in our table when we pull up our calculator. So let's look at y equals 10 over x for a second. Let's just use that as an example. So always, always, always when we're given an equation, like for example this, y equals 10 over x, we come in our calculator and put it in our y equals. 10 over x, second step, we set up our table. We want to start at 0 in this case, go up by 1, that will be fine. So our table start is 0, change in table is 1, and then we go second graph, which is our third step, takes us to our table. Okay, so for this example, as you can see, 0, when x is 0, we have an error. All right, so I'm going to move the calculator out of the way here. And let's fill out the values that we saw. So we've already got the error part in there. So give us a little more room here over that. When before on our calculator, when x was 1, we had a y value of 10. When x was 2, we had a y value of 5. When x was 3, we had a value of 3 and 1 third or 3.3 .3 repeating. When x was 4, we had a y value of 2.5. And, and when x was 5, we had a y value of 2. That should be good enough. So bring the calculator back in quickly and you will see that we have the same setup here 
We have x of 0 gives us an error, x of 1 gives us 10, x of 2 gives us y of 5, 3 gives us 3.3 .3 repeating, 4 gives us 2.5, 5 gives us 2. Okay? Alright. Next step. The other critical point will be we had our zero error, so that's, let's circle that. That's a critical point and something that we will see in the pattern for all inverse variations. We have also, this will be true, right here. When x is 1, whatever y is equal to is our constant. So another way to look at this table, inverse variation will have this pattern x, y, we'll have, when x is 0, we get an error. When x is 1, we get our k value, our k value from over here. Remember our k value right there, okay? That will always be the case. We get 0 error, and then 1, and x of 1 gives us our k value. And in this case, our k value was 10, and that's why it's showing up when x is 1. So in a table, those are the most critical things that you will see. When you are trying to graph a, an inverse variation, given a table of values, for example, or given the equation and then you generate a table, you want to use, the easiest thing to do is to use your whole number values. So in other words, when y is a whole number, that will be the easiest thing for you to graph to get a set of points uh, to actually be able to put this graph together. So let's erase the graph that we had. And let's build one from this table of values quickly. All right, so let's put in our axis, our, our y-axis, and then our x-axis. We'll, we're just concerned about positive x and y values in this case. So when x is 0, we have, we'll put our x here and our y here. We have an error, of course. So when we have an x of 1, Let's put 10, let's scale this. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'm going to move this up a little bit so we have room for 10. 10 up here. And down here we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Sometimes you'll have the scale already given to you, but it's important that you know how to do this. The reason we always start with our table when we're working is because that will give us uh, the window uh, if we're setting it up on our calculator or the area that we want to actually graph. So we have an x of 0 through 5 and I've got 0 through 5 as my x here. We have a range or y uh, that we're currently looking at. The maximum value is 10, the minimum value is down here at 2. So our, our graph will work perfectly. So let's put these points in. Alright, so we had 1 and 10 so an x of 1, a y of 10, it's right there. We have 2 and 5. Remember, we're looking for whole numbers over here in the y column. So 2 and 5. And then the next one, 5 and 2. And then we can, with those three points, any curved graph like this, three points is enough for you to be able to make a rough estimation of the shape. So in this case, it looks something like this. So we have our hockey stick shaped graph here. You'll notice a couple of other things. The graph is decreasing, which means it goes down from left to right, left to right. That is our definition of a decreasing graph. As In other words, as x increases, y decreases. Another very important factor to look at here is the change in the y. As y is changing each time, notice here it's a change of 5. Here it's a change of about 1.7. 
The next change in y is about 0.8. Then it's 0.2. And if we continue to look at our calculator, let me pull that over here. If we continue to look at our calculator, let's arrow down here a little bit. You see we have a, a value of uh, 5 and 2, then 6 and 1.667. 7, an x of 7 gives us 1.4286. You notice how each time, and this pattern would continue on to infinity as far as that goes, every time your x is increasing by 1, your y decrease gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So if we jump out here and we go second table set and jump to a value of, say, 100 in our table, and then jump to that spot in our table, you will see how small these changes are becoming. You got 0 0.09804, then 0 0.09709, 0 0.09615. So these changes in Y continue to get incrementally smaller. On and on and on. That is the pattern. Over here, our biggest change was 5, and then it dropped all the way to 1.7, and then 0.8, and then 0.2, and over here, it's very, very small decimals. So that is the behavior of an inverse variation graph. Later on in mathematics, you'll come to realize that this is a rational function. It is the parent function would be a rational function, but at this point in Algebra 1 we are looking at it as inverse variation in the y equals k over x format. And the basics on all everything that we're covering right now in Algebra 1 is we want to be able to build a table just like we did over here. We want to be able to build a graph just like we did here and we want to be able to get an equation from that. So whether we're given an equation and asked to make a table and a graph or we're given a graph and asked to make a table and an equation or we're given the gra uh, table and asked to make the other two. R regardless, you need to be able to uh, get that done and based on these basics, uh, these same patterns will appear on forever so if you were given this graph you could just pick a couple of points and then fill in a table and if you're just given the graph and asked to find what the function is for example you can see that when X is 1 we've got the hockey stick shaped graph so we're we're confident that it is an inverse variation situation or at least we can uh, hypothesize that's, that that is true and then test it we go to the first critical value which is when x is 1 whatever y is equal to that point equal to at that point would be our k value so in this case we see that we have a y value of 10 when x is 1 so our equation is exactly this y equals 10 over x if we're given a table we're going to immediately know that we have inverse variation when we see 0 and error in together. When x is 0, we have an error for y because any time our denominator in a fraction is 0, it is considered to be undefined. And that is exactly what is going on here. Uh, that That is the key to what we're covering right now to know that it's inverse variation. And later on we're going to look at some example problem situations and work some problems uh, using real world situations that are modeled best by inverse variation. So again the goal is to be able to write an equation, make a table, make a graph, or take any one of the three and develop the others. That is everything that we are doing here in this first unit in Algebra 1. So I hope this video helped discuss the inverse variation basics and help you understand what those are and will help you be successful on the assignments related to inverse variation.